once again, it is me, Brandon Hart, the Eco Struder, and boy, am I eco excited to talk to you about some eco-friendly 3D printing filament. Uh, PHA. What, what the, the heck, heck is, is it, Edgar? Let's find out together on this episode of the Eco Struder. Our journey began back in 2015 when Brandon Hart, a young and naive 3D printing enthusiast, was on the search for eco-friendly, biodegradable, compostable 3D printer filaments. Surely such a thing must exist. Surely there must be multiple options out there with all sorts of fun colors and characteristics and features to them. Not really. Most people think the PLA is fully biodegradable. You can toss it in your garbage can, feel good about it going into the landfill because it's just gonna turn into dirt that children can play on at some point in the future. Uh, sadly, that is not the reality of it. PLA can biodegrade if they are placed in a very specific set of conditions. Generally speaking, an industrial biodegradable facility um, a, an industrial composter of some kind. You're not gonna toss it into your backyard compost heap and expect everything to break down. I don't wanna dwell on that too much right now because we have in front of us a selection of materials with one important ingredient. And that is this plastic known as PHA. What is PHA? Glad you asked because I have my notes right here. I will certainly not remember how to say this otherwise. It is polyhydroxyalkanoates. I nailed it. That's definitely exactly how you say that. Uh, but basically PHA is a, another bioplastic. The big difference with PHA is that it does not require a specific set of environmental conditions in order to break down and biodegrade and essentially leave no microplastics in the environment. So that's really the holy grail. That's what we want as a bunch of tree-hugging hippie nerds that love 3D printing, such as this one. So how do we get that? Are there options out there? Well, we went on a search for as much PHA-based filament as we could find and it's pretty much all right here in front of us. So first of all we have the kind of the, the go-to option that everybody seems to point to. Certainly the most popular PLA PHA blend out there in the world is Colorfab's PLA PHA. They don't come up with a fancy clever marketing name for it. It's just straight up PLA PHA. So this is a blend of PLA and PHA as the name implies. But basically what you end up with is a pretty much PLA looking, acting, behaving type of material that is more biodegradable. Certainly the PHA aspect of it will be biodegradable and will break down in the environment. I was unable to locate exactly what sort of percentage we're talking about in terms of what's PLA versus what's PHA. It certainly prints like it's just straight up PLA and it's very rigid as well, just like PLA tends to be. So I'd venture a guess that there's not a lot of PHA content in this particular material. However, having some is better than having none. So this is Colorfab's PLA PHA. Seems to print great. We're, we're gonna test it and see how impact resistant it is. That's why we have our lattice cubes here. But the next one I wanna talk about is 3D Print Life's Playfab, which I don't actually have. <laughs> so we're gonna pretend PLA PHA uh, or Playfab as they call it, playing on the name, is essentially the same sort of thing. This is a material that is a PLA and PHA blend. Put together, you get a more eco-friendly material from the two, but it is still something that is gonna require an industrial composting facility from all I can tell. We have printed with this before, as you saw in our Tough PLA video. If you haven't seen that video, the link is around here somewhere to take you to that video so you can check it out. Uh, but 
the PlayFab material is very much like PLA, again, so I think it's a minimal PHA content combined with quite a bit of, of PLA. The one over here, to my far right, is a material from a startup called Goo Ventures. They call their material Goo. So this is original Goo in the original buttermilk color from Goo Ventures. And this material has a significantly higher percentage of PHA than what you find in the other two here. This material does not behave like PLA. <laughs> uh, it is quite a bit softer. It's got more of a silky, uh, smooth feel to it. And it, there's, a, there's a lot of stringing with this material. It, does, it just doesn't behave like a normal PLA does. It's pretty cool stuff. It is quite a bit warpier than either of these because, again, it's not acting like straight up PLA anymore. Okay, that's a whole lot of talk about the alternatives, but we really got to get to the star of the show over here, and that is a brand new material from ColorFab. In addition to their PLA PHA, they now have a material known as Alpha or All PHA. You want to guess how much of this material is PHA? It's, it's all of it. It's alpha, all PHA. It's a fun, fun marketing name. Uh, so yes, this alpha material is brand new. We actually pre-ordered it before they were even offering it so that we could get our hands on it. This did not exist when the idea for this video was, was uh, established. We wanted to find the best PHA-based materials that we could in order to make a video about some cool, more biodegradable types of, of options for our viewers out there. But uh, then all of a sudden this was announced and what great timing. How does it compare to the materials we've already tested which are a combination of PLA and PHA? Well, first of all, when you print with this material, you are printing with a pure PHA material, which means that the more biodegradable aspects of all these other materials is all you're printing with here. So yeah, this material fully biodegrades, 100%. The statement from, from uh, ColorFab is, alpha is 100% bio-based and 100% biodegradable in any biotope. That's important. That means that you don't have to put it into an industrial composting facility for it to break down and return to its constituent parts. And, um, and as they say here, without leaving any microplastics in the environment. That is awesome. I mean, wow, we finally have something that lives up to the, the hype of being a biodegradable material. This is super, super cool. So uh, how does it print? How does it work? Well, I wish it was all sunshine and butterflies, but sadly it is not. We had quite a bit of failures <laughs> when printing with this particular material. Uh, this was printed on the Sidewinder X2. Our experience is that you tend to get a lot of scrap when you first start printing with this particular material. And that's due to a variety of different things. Number one, the material itself is softer than a lot of other materials. It's very flexible compared to a PLA. It also has the unique aspect of needing to print on a cold bed. So if you're, you happen to have a machine that does not have a heated bed, guess what? This material is great because it does not want any heat on the bed whatsoever or parts will warp up. You also need to print with some sort of bed adhesive, Magigoo, Demafix, 3D Lac, uh, you know, easy fix, whatever the case may be. Uh, we've also tried using just straight up school glue, for example, on the goo, and it works kind of okay-ish, but you got to have some sort of bed adhesive. Also, whether you do a full brim or you do anti-warping discs is up to you, but you have to have some way of kind of holding the part down you may be sensing sort of a pattern here, which is that it likes to warp up off of the bed if you're not careful. However, 
if you are careful and you do it right, you can end up with some very nice printed parts. And it does work quite well. So, um, you know, these, these things can work out quite well if you dial in your print settings just perfectly. We printed a couple of lattice cubes because this material has interesting flexibility to it. And we thought, well, maybe that makes it pretty impact resistant. Be curious to find out. Actually, let's find out. Let's, let's smash these lattice cubes and see what happens. All right, we have our familiar setup here for testing impact resistance on different materials. So we're gonna jump right into dropping the ball and seeing if any of these manufacturers drop the ball on their impact resistance. First off, we have Color Fabs PLA PHA. Let's give this a try. Okay, well, I don't know if we call that a fail. It did survive the initial impact, so uh, I think we're okay. Right now we are at uh, 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters. I feel like it's pretty low and most materials should be able to survive this kind of an impact, but we'll see. All right, and now we're gonna move on to Goo Ventures. There we go. And of course, Alpha. No problem at all. Just shrugs it off. All right, let's move up to, let's go all the way up to 400 millimeters. Okay, dropping again at 400 millimeters. Whew. I'd say that's a pass. We are joined by our trusty lab assistant Kaladin Korgblest here. <laughs> Thank you, Cal, for joining us. Ooh, that's gonna be a fail. Very crunchy. Oh, that's a fail on the Goo Ventures. Let's give them one more try to survive this height before fully disqualifying them. Yeah, that would be a smash. Goo Ventures is out at 400 millimeters. Alpha. No problem at all. As suspected, the increased flexibility allows the material to deform a little bit and absorb the impact rather than just breaking, so. That could be a good reason to use this material. Right, Cal? Awesome. Moving up to 500 millimeters. All right, once again at 500 millimeters, the stress was too much for Cal, so he left us. Here we go. Oh! That's a crunch right there. Yikes. All right, let's give it one more shot. Actually, that worked. I'm gonna give it a pass. Okay, well, it kinda didn't think that would happen. That's the fun of experimentation. Okay, now the alpha. No problem at all. Well, you know what's next? 600 millimeters. Okay, ColorFab PLA PHA at 600 millimeters. Okay, there's no denying that, that's a fail. Sorry, Color Fab. And with, then there was one. We have the Alpha. Six hundred millimeters, Color Fab Alpha. And we have a fail. Let's try it one more time just in case the previous sample had started to break down from previous hits. It broke. 
Okay, so I would say in general, the ColorFab Alpha definitely did take more of an impact before failure than most of the ones that have PLA and PHA. Um, so, very interesting. Back to the desk. Well, that was interesting. So yeah, actually the materials that have less PLA in them, AKA no PLA in them, actually can take more of an impact. Certainly doesn't make it impervious to impact, but it will be able to take more of a hit. So that PHA being as flexible as it is, is able to absorb those impacts and, uh, and, and therefore be able to survive more of them. So that could be an interesting point with the alpha material. <clears throat> okay, so we have to kind of address the elephant in the room, which is, who is this for? <laughs> it's a great material and everything, but like, who is this for? Who would buy this? Why would they buy this? Well, certainly, you know, dirty granola eating, tree hugging hippies like myself love this type of thing. And if I can print parts with this particular material that I know are not going to exist for 500 and some years in a landfill, then I'm gonna do that. So certainly I'm gonna reach for this whenever possible. Yes, it's expensive. You wouldn't wanna print extraordinarily large things with this material, but given its flexibility and its impact resistance, there could be some situations where you want something that is less rigid than a typical PLA is, in which case the material properties of this are better than perhaps reaching for a nylon or reaching for some sort of a rigid TPU both of which are petroleum based and will exist almost forever. So it's, it's, it's for people who care about the environment, clearly. It is a material that is, has a bit of a price tag associated with it that I hope will come down over time. Um, but it is a very, very interesting innovation and I applaud the folks at ColorFab for going this direction and coming up with a product that is actually printable and fully biodegradable without special facilities. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff. I will leave links to data sheets in the description. So if you want to check out any of these materials, you can do that. Uh, not all of them have data sheets, but uh, in those cases, I'll direct you to wherever I can so that you can get some more information on each material. Um, all in all, PHA seems to be a new material to the 3D printer uh, market that has a lot of potential. Hopefully, as, the, as the, the popularity of this material, either as a, a, an additive to existing materials or as a standalone material, um, as that popularity grows, so will the, uh, the, the available options and in an inverse relationship, so will the price will drop as well. Uh, that's my hope. So uh, with that, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of this big, long, rambling uh, part, then I really do appreciate that and, uh, and would, uh, would love it if you would leave a like, um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and let me know what other uh, eco-friendly materials have you found? What other uh, materials that claim to be biodegradable, compostable, would you like us to test? Would you want us to look into and, and report back on? This is the kind of stuff that is near and dear to my heart, so I am open to all suggestions. With that being said, I want to wish everybody a wonderful remainder of 2022 and whatever year you happen to be watching this in, and have fun printing. We'll see you next time.